welcome to Vision Forward's Tech Connect Live, connecting you to the world of assistive technology. And now, here are your hosts, Corey and Luke. Hello, everybody. Hello, uh, <laughs> this is the disembodied voice of Luke. Hello. I am coming from the beyond. He's like the, uh, the, the Oz to ignore the man behind oh, yeah. the curtain, right? Is that, yeah. is that how they <laughs> the say The great it? powerful Oh, yeah, Luke. there you go. The I am pulling powerful. the levers of Tech Connect from, from the great beyond. Well, that sounds like you died. <laughs> right? I mean, great what we're beyond. going for. Is that what that, hey, I still have my headphone in. Let's oh, get yeah. rid of that. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. You might have noticed that on the show today, we are in a brand new location. This is the new Tech Connect Live studio. Yes. Oh, and we have a brand new staff member now. Um, well, is this Luke with a uh, different clothes on and a new hairstyle? Actually, What's going Rose, on here? I, Rose, you should have just been moving your mouth as he was talking. I should so have like yeah, trick people. We're doing a ventriloquism. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, we, so I don't know that we've done a Tech Connect Live from the kitchen before, our training kitchen. I think this is a, that first time because yeah. this isn't the first time, Rose, that you have mm. been on Tech Connect Live. No, I believe we were um, in what, Italy or something. You, yeah, yeah, we had you in a real kitchen. fancy yeah, yeah. Italian kitchen. Nice kitchen. Or a yes. French kitchen. Or something. something. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but we are not in that beautiful Italian kitchen this time. We are in a Milwaukee-based kitchen. Yeah, this is more down-to-earth now. This is the real deal. This is where the real yep. cooking happens. A lot of people magic, say yep. that cooking was invented in Italy. I say nay nay. I think <laughs> cooking was invented in Milwaukee. Now, I just, I just like to interject. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that cooking was invented in Italy. <laughs> oh, I've heard that many times. Yeah. Now, okay. yeah, for sure. Right. Now, a lot of people would say, well, I think cooking's been around way before. Well, that's Milwaukee. why I, that was my instant thought. Yeah. Like, yeah well, they yeah. were doing it wrong. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> right up right. until this point. Okay. What they, is what is the uh, the Milwaukee specialty? What well, is it? I think it's kind of it's got to be bratwurst, right? I was just gonna say bratwurst, oh, cheese. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always assume that, that was a beer right, that, I always assume that was a German specialty, but well, <laughs> m m uh, Wisconsin, but Milwaukee. I mean, there's a big German. Okay. Uh, population. Population. So what you're saying is, in Germany, they're doing it wrong. The real bratwurst is in uh, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Is that what you're saying? No, <laughs> I would probably say maybe we are the little brother to That's the German bratwurst. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, fair enough. Well, uh, hopefully you'll be making some bratwurst for us uh, today then. I assume that's what's happening? No, I don't think no. so. Okay, that's a shame. We don't have time for that. <laughs> no? Okay, well, uh, what do we have time for on today's show? Well, that is a very good question. So we obviously wanted to do something on cooking. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, we could kind of sit in tech like we did last time and talk about different things. Or we could get a little creative and actually use the things that we want to talk about, but in, in yeah. a way where you're teaching me how to make a salad today. Now, yep. looking at me, you might say, Corey, it looks like you eat a salad every day. Yeah. You're a very healthy <laughs> specimen of a man. Not an ounce of extra fat on you at all. Lean, but, some might say. Yes, yeah. but I would say nay nay, <laughs> as I did for the Italian. Is this, like, is this like a new thing for you? It is. Nay, I'm nay. trying it out. I'm yeah. trying out a new catchphrase. Yeah, if, uh, uh, if anybody in the chat thinks Corey's catchphrase is cool, you might want to say nay nay. Nay nay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, we thought we'd try something a little different. And obviously we didn't have a lot of time, right, to cook like a steak or uh, something like that. So, mm -hmm. Rosie, you thought doing a salad yep. was a cool way of showing a number of adaptive cooking tools mm -hmm. and techniques. Because yep. I think that's kind of our plan today, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So it involves a lot of... More so the techniques, I'd say, yeah. and then some tools that can be helpful too. Rose, I think maybe mm -hmm. our audience would uh, be interested to know a little bit about you yeah, sure. and uh, your background and so on and so forth. Yes, so I am an occupational therapist. I'm also a certified low vision therapist. I've worked at Vision Forward here in Milwaukee 16 years, I think now. Ooh. Um, so yeah, so I use my, my OT background, my occupational therapy background, as well as my interactions with the great staff here at Vision Forward. Wait, to did you say of... great, sorry? Yes. Yes, oh, great. I think she yep. <laughs> yeah, there's no <laughs> And I pointed at Corey, I put Luke too. <laughs> oh. Um, but it's, I would use the, my skills here in this environment to teach people, teach adults with vision loss how to cook and clean and, and take their medications and do all of their activities of daily living. I think there's, and I think, I find that, I think that plays such a big role because we've talked many times about like ADL's activities of daily mm -hmm. living and how all of the things that we 
think about somebody doing independent, like going and working and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff is important, but like it can't really happen if you're not taking care of your daily things at home, right? How do you Definitely. go to work if you can't prepare a lunch or yep. whatever it might yep. be? Definitely, there's that important connection between your activities of daily living and doing well at school or work or just you know, going to the grocery store or going out in the community, yeah. playing with your dog outside. There's, you know, there's a connection between having those down. And it's and interesting that. how many people are, and I think we find this probably more so with people who have lost their vision later in life or mm -hmm. have recently lost their vision. How many people think to themselves how they can't do a lot of these things? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how every. Uh, our social worker Erica tells a story a lot about a gentleman who's like I'm bored at home and she, they were like well why don't you do the dishes well I can't do the dishes when I'm blind mm -hmm. and it's like well sure you can mm -hmm. and then then he tries it and is like oh my gosh I can do all these things and mm -hmm. so I think when we talk about cooking and especially even around the salad preparation mm -hmm. with all the cutting like yeah. that is a big fear for people yeah definitely that fear and then not just of the person with the vision loss but their family members yeah. too a lot of family members are like no you're not going to make a salad you're not going to use the stove because understandably they're concerned and there is that fear but yeah you know we kind of teach people too that it's okay to kind of make some mistakes too as long as you're not hurting yourself but it's okay <laughs> to drop say, things kind of mistake? yeah <laughs> you don't want you to cut your finger off right? <laughs> i mean you learn from them but <laughs> but that's how we learn right from yeah. the some of the little things that the mishaps as long as you don't cut off a finger <laughs> well i mean so many of those things i i think about two two recent uh, one recent one long time ago i remember going to work one day and sitting down with a lunch that I made for myself and eating the sandwich. And then I pull a can out, open it up, thinking it's a soda. And I take a big <laughs> swig and it's a beer. Oh. So, you know, so I think that's one, not organizing the... the, the, the oh, so oh. after you drank the rest of it, you said, well, oh, that was it. I would <laughs> never do that again. But yeah. then recently, like oh, two weeks ago, I get a text from my daughter. She's 14. And at school, in her lunch, I packed what I thought was one of these favorite drinks. She has these bubblers. Oh, yeah. They're like in a tall, skinny oh, can. Oh, yeah. yeah well, son, in son. the fridge, I didn't realize we had uh, Sunny, Sunny D has a new uh, adult adult drink. What? Well, it's vodka and Sunny D, but wow. it comes in the same tall, skinny can. Oh, my goodness. So I packed a <laughs> vodka Sunny D in her lunch in, in eighth grade. And so her and her friends were laughing. <laughs> Uh, but those are some of those mistakes. That I'm surprised are... she told you about that. I mean, she's full. Well, she also here. brought home the empty yeah. can. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> cool. The evidence. <laughs> but those are those examples of those mistakes you end mm -hmm. up making. And obviously, there are techniques mm -hmm. uh, to help those things not from happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. And those are going to happen. But organization and kind of labeling are two big things, too, that I, I train people on. Mm -hmm. And that applies to, you know, cutting and making a salad, too, is making sure you have all your supplies that you need, making sure they're in a set spot in your, your home, that you can identify them. Gotcha. Um, there's ways to label some of those items, too. Okay. Which Corey is obviously not doing a very good job of at the moment. <laughs> well, that's right. Which is why he's here to learn. <laughs> I, had all, I had all my alcohol labeled correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just didn't have my daughter. <laughs> well, what do you think? Should we dive in? Yeah, and... let's get started. Okay. And let's like first talk about what we have the tools we yeah, have speaking good. of organization now i'm guessing um, and i don't want to step on your toes but i'm guessing a lot of these tools some are might be specific to people with some remaining vision and some mm -hmm. are going to be a little more specific to people with no usable vision yes right? okay. you're exactly gotcha. right and some of them are just tools that any of us have around our house yeah. so um right in front of you is kind of our, our cutting station so we okay. have our, our cutting board um, this one is called a low vision cutting board. So the spot you're holding up right now, that's a white surface. So it's white on one side. Gotcha. And if we flip it over, it's black on the other side. Okay. So for somebody who has low vision, has a little bit of vision, you would choose the side that contrasts well with whatever you're trying to cut. That so. makes sense. Onions on the black side. Yep. Tomatoes on the white, maybe, yep. or whatever it might you be. You got okay. it, exactly. And then we also have the board setting on a piece of non-slip shelf liner. Yep, okay. Um, a towel will work good, just something to stabilize your board, because yeah. you don't want it moving all over on Slipping you when on. you're trying sure. to cut something. Um, and then I have the cutting board setting on a tray, just to catch any pieces of, you know, 
budgies or whatever yeah. that may fall off the board. And that looks like maybe um, an old school cafeteria tray. It actually kinda, is right? that okay. same type. Cool. Yep, yep. And it's black. So again, that contrast, if if somebody has some vision and the items fall off, you'll hopefully be able to see it against the, the tray. Yeah. You don't have to use a tray, just our, our setup here. Um, if you are using a different type of a cutting board, um, not necessarily a low vision one, but one that's nice and big is what mm -hmm. you want. So one that's really big, yeah, so things stay on the board. I like the tray too. I mean, that makes sense. You know, you can even put a knife inside on the side or part of yep. whatever, you know, the you cut, but then you have the waste part of yep. the vegetable. You can throw that off to the exactly. side, but it's still inside that tray. Yep, it kind of catches mm -hmm. everything. Exactly, mm -hmm. yep. Um, and then on either side of the cutting board, we have a couple of bowls. Okay. Um, and it's good to have actual bowls or containers, bags, whatever you have, to contain a couple of things. One is your scraps, your garbage. When you're cutting things up, you're probably going to have stems and, you know, little pieces that you don't want in your salad. Sure, sure. <laughs> so one bowl could be for the scraps. And then the other bowl is for your pieces that you're going to put into your salad. Okay. One thing I noticed, too, that, that we didn't mention that I think makes a lot of sense. You did you mention having uh, something between the cutting board and the tray so it mm -hmm. doesn't slip. But it, underneath the tray, you also have um, another kind of, uh, what do you call those? Um, things? Slip yeah, and slip. Yeah, exactly. Liner. So that uh, now the tray won't slip as exactly. well, too. And I, it's yep. funny, I didn't even, I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. But it, that what a simple thing that probably can really keep you from yeah. those slip those cutting mistakes where you yep. might slip and, and cut your yeah, finger. Yeah, so. because you could easily slip if mm -hmm. that slides on you. And the slip the non slip shelf liner comes in lots of different colors too. So if you have some vision you can choose a color that sure. stands out a little bit more too. Oh, I'm so. curious, okay. have yeah. you ever cut yourself in a serious manner? No, never. Okay, that's never that's really good. Cut, I mean little little Not ones, but one. nothing that I've ever had to go in and have any yeah. work done. That that was that was cooking related. That's what <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hope today is not the day then. Thanks, I will be very yeah, no, happy. Like, I feel, I feel like I that cursed up, you now. But... No, I think we'll be okay. Not we'll just make sure here. it's tomatoes and we won't know. <laughs> I did bring a tomato here today. So. Um, and then let's see other tools that are good to have. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll get right into the, the actual cutting tool. Sure, so that sounds good. You can cut things with um, things other than knives. So okay. we're going to talk a little bit about knives, but there's other things that you can use to cut up your food for your salad too. I did notice one over there. I won't say it just yet, that okay. I'm excited to see how it's used because it looks like it's something that we wouldn't typically use in my mind it's used for cutting other things so i'll okay. be i'll be interested okay. to see how it's used we're gonna that. i think i think i know which one you might be talking <laughs> about but here's a very simple one i'm gonna hand it to you okay gotcha what is this so this is a, a standard pair of scissors mm -hmm. or maybe not standard but it is a pair of scissors yep okay yep so scissors work great for cutting things like your lettuce for your salad you can sure. use your scissors for that um, cutting up like green beans or smaller items, mm -hmm. scissors can work perfectly well for that. So okay. sometimes people feel more comfortable with, with those. Yeah, I would um, assume we'd want dedicated kitchen. Um, probably. Well, right. Probably not just going to grab them out of the junk drawer. And yeah, cut probably beans. not. Or the so ones much. you use to <laughs> cut your daughter's <laughs> hair or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a kitchen one. Um, so I'll take that. Um, mm -hmm. Another one is this one. This might be the one you were talking it about. It sounds like, yeah, this is a pizza cutter. Yep. So I'm I'm. In, curious to see how that's going to be used in a salad prep type so, way. I can think of some ways already, well, what, but I'm What curious. do you think you would use it for? Well, I was thinking like if you potentially used a knife to cut up tomato, but then wanted to dice them into a little smaller, you could potentially use you know a pick or onion you can yep. maybe use it for something like that onion would probably doing... be really good for di the dicing part yeah, cutting yeah. into smaller pieces or even some of the lettuce too you can cut through oh sure um you know other types of food for other other meals you can mm -hmm. use it to cut mm -hmm. with so and it's this is a big heavy one so you, i think you want one that's pretty big and yeah, heavy to sense. get through the food so it a lot depends on your comfort level so just knowing that you don't have to use knives for mm -hmm. every cutting thing yeah. you can use some of these alternative cutting gotcha. tools too and then this one i'm going to hand this to you okay so okay what do you think this is yeah i mean this looks like another kind of cutting uh, i forget i don't know what the the, the word is for it i don't know it, if but there's one official word yeah. i call it a chopper yeah chopper's not <laughs> same kind of thing but it's 
it, to me, it seems like it's a little, a little more dull than a standard yes. knife is, but yet still yep. gives you good, a nice good grip to kind of do a, you know. Do you yep. want to describe it maybe, Corey? Yep. So it, I'm trying to think of what, how I would explain it. Is yeah. it like a, a rectangular metal yeah, surface metal with a handle on top? Yep. One side is the, the cutting blade. The mm -hmm. other side has got a rounded handle for you to hold on to. Almost like a double a wide spatula yeah. without the um, without the actual you know handle, handle part coming yep. or like you said a paint scraper yeah if yep. you see one of those it's like a double wide of that probably yep. you have a yeah. handy paint scraper can you use that in lieu of one of these yeah sure why not okay. I won't be <laughs> sharp it, enough but... use it with your uh, use it with your junk drawer scissors it'll work out good <laughs> yep it adds now this, extra um, flavor to your, uh, exactly. to your paint meal. flavor <laughs> now this one you, you kind of use an up and down motion okay so now the, um, yeah gotcha like okay. chopping or dicing and then it also works good too so if you cut up some items on your cutting board then you can scrape the yeah, tool along the cutting board to bring the items over to your bowl and that's so. got a nice long cutting <laughs> edge so that the dicing yes. motion you were doing you don't really need to line it i mean you could just kind of yep and i would you know kind of turn your hand in different directions exactly. as you're doing you're going to cover a lot of a lot of dicing yes yeah, so you don't need as precise yeah. of a uh, and i like that what you were just saying it. kind of then using it to scrape things yep. into the middle exactly yeah. yep so so yeah get creative with some of the the cutting tools that are out there you know um you can also buy, you know, pre-cut veggies in the store, oh, sure. like onions and all that, but that's sure. not so fun, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but if you do that, buy the frozen versus the canned. It's going to be See, healthier. There you go. Okay. So, um, I would think even too, like I'm thinking carrots, you know, you can oh, obviously yeah. get normal carrots or less mm -hmm. expensive, cut the edges, edges off, mm -hmm. peel them, mm -hmm. or you could buy baby carrots. Yeah. And they're already peeled for you, cut them up. Which I do know. a lot for, if I'm making like stews and soups mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. I just buy the, the baby carrots <laughs> yeah. save some yeah. time. And I think in mm -hmm. a lot of cases that's fine. I mm -hmm. mean, I think mm -hmm. it's the, at the end of the day, it's what you're comfortable yep. with. And if that mm -hmm. allows you to, you know, if that's the difference between making it and not making it, then obviously go yep. that route. You know? Yep. And, and, you know, cooking and preparing food is about time management, too. So mm -hmm. if you are cutting up a lot of fresh veggies and food for your meals, you're going to have to account for that time it takes to do that. So sure. if you know you don't have enough time to do that part, sure. buy the pre-diced items, okay. too. Or, or do your salad in steps. So, so cut up your veggies one day and today's uh, day. Today's session could have been really short if we would have just bought, like, a bag. <laughs> bag of lettuce. Salad, and literally just yep. opening it and pouring it in. Like, <laughs> All done, guys. Yeah. Exactly. Salad's done. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> All right. So um, then other things, I'm going to show you um, yeah. an adaptive peeler. So okay. you usually have to peel some things for your salad, yeah, too. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is called a palm peeler. Okay. So it goes on your finger, kind of like when you're wearing a ring. Gotcha. Usually your middle finger is a good one to put it on. And it's kind of flexible. The, the ring part does mm -hmm. flex a little bit. Okay. Um, but because you wear the blade in the palm of your hand, you have greater control. You can kind of feel where that blade sure, is. Sure, sure. Um, we're going to practice this in kind of, just a minute. But On a normal one peeler, you're holding a handle and then yep. the blade is out in front of you. So it's almost kind of, I don't want to say it's out in space. But I always say for that. Some, it, it kind of is to a <laughs> certain extent. Mm -hmm. Where this, you're bringing it now, it's right underneath my palm. Yep. Plus, the edges of this go farther out than the blade. So now my hand and my fingers are protected, protected by exactly. that. Exactly. Yep. Um, and it's a little better, better. No, it's up underneath. So yep. now when I kind of scrape it across yep. something, it yeah, I know where the blade is. Exactly. Versus, yep. You yeah. know where it's at. It's safer. Mm -hmm. You get greater feedback, tactile feedback. Yeah. So you know what you're kind of doing. And we'll practice this in a minute when we yeah, peel some sense. of our veggies. <laughs> I had a real quick question about uh -huh. knives really fast. Yep. Uh, uh, I had a family member one time purchase me some of those. I don't even know what they're made out of, but like those plastic knives that are supposed to have a cutting edge but they can't cut your finger oh, yet they'll still cut. you know which ones i'm talking yeah, about they're yeah. like nylon or whatever they yep. any experience with those like what um i mean i've had some clients that use those you want your knives to be sharp yeah that's the important thing because uh you want it to cut through food with with 
minimal effort. So mm -hmm. if your knives are dull, you're going to be working at it a lot more. It's going to be sure. harder to cut through and you could cut yourself. So I was going to say that resistance from mm -hmm. a dull blade is, mm -hmm. is the typical cause of yes. accidents, right? It's yeah. slipping or you're yep. putting way too much pressure down. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Or being in a hurry. You know, sure. I cut myself when I'm in a hurry. So just kind of being focused when you cut. But yeah, having those nice sharp yeah. knives is important. So, okay. so speaking of knives, let's talk a little bit yeah. about them. So okay. A lot of us have lots of different types of knives at mm -hmm. home. I don't know if you, I have a knife drawer, which is terrible. I should not have my knives just thrown, just in, thrown a in a drawer. Yeah. <laughs> not good. <laughs> um, but you should be have different sizes and, and types. Mm -hmm. I usually recommend for most cutting things to use the, the chef's knife or the butcher knife. I'm going to let you feel this. Okay. I'm going to hand the handle towards gotcha. you. Gotcha. And so this the, is the little thicker, when I yes. think of... The, when I look at any knife set, there's mm -hmm. always the one that's got the, the wider, thicker blade. Yes. That's almost what this one it yep. seems to be. Okay. Exactly. The wider blade, longer, it's bigger than most of the other knives. Is it a dull end or a tip? Nope, it does have a tip. Yep, okay. so it does have a tip on it. And there's different um, styles. Some of them look slightly different than this. But I think gotcha. the point is like it's bigger and heavier. Gotcha. Because the, the weight of the knife is going to help you to kind of slice through things a little bit mm -hmm. easier. Mm -hmm. You can really feel it in your hands. You get a lot of tactile feedback. So I usually recommend that. There's pairing knives, which are really smaller ones. Some yeah. people feel comfortable with those. Sure. But um, but I usually recommend the big big one. Okay. Whatever one you're comfortable with, too, is that important. Makes sense. I suppose it depends on hand size, how strong. I mean, yep. this might be a kind of a big, heavier knife or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, and then um, with the knife, too, um, most of them or a lot of them have a little indentation where your finger naturally mm -hmm. will go when you're holding onto the handle. Mm -hmm. So if you want to grab that knife, um, yep. you can kind of find right, how your right finger the, yep, yep. goes right into that little indentation. That can tell you let you know that the sharp side of the knife is, is down. Yeah. Because it can be sense. hard sometimes to tell if you have the sharp side or the dull yeah, side. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so just look for that little indentation. Otherwise, it's okay to very um, carefully touch the sides of the blade to know what's the sharp side or what's the dull side. Yeah, I the always... The different texture to, to them. I always... T uh, the way I typically mm -hmm. do it is I'll feel the side first mm -hmm. just to get an orientation of yep. where the blade is. Mm -hmm. And then I'll typically do more of like a palm, ver not just a single fingertip because yep. I feel like that... It's probably more prone if you're rubbing, you know, that across the. Okay, first don't of all, rub. don't ever rub. Don't rub. <laughs> I was just gonna say, don't ever do a cutting motion. No, but no, if you no. just sort of do a little bit of a tap, yep. you know, you can get a, a good feel for Tapping which side. Tapping is what you yeah, want, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. And you probably will know if you start to cut something and it's the dull it's side. Not, it's not yeah. going through. Yeah, that is very <laughs> but that true. can just be that helpful. Um, with your knife too, when you're storing it in, um, when you're done washing it and cleaning it. Having knives that have a sheath or a cover mm -hmm. is a good way to store them, or sure. in your knife block. Um, so you don't want to do what I do and put them in my drawer. That's what I do, sir, but, but I um, if you had to put them in your drawer, sometimes it can be nice to wrap it in like a washcloth. Sure. Just so it's nice and safe when you go to search. Or always for put knife. the handle towards the yeah. yeah towards the front, so of that when drawer, you reach yeah. in, you just reach right to the front. And <laughs> exactly. Then, yeah. Good tip. Not that there. we're not that we're saying uh, we're that hasn't don't happened. Don't just to throw it in your drawer or anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> exactly. Um, and then when you're cutting something on your cutting board, mm -hmm. you're probably going to have moments where you cut things and then you stop cutting and put your items in your bowls. Yeah. So if you have to set your knife down, I'm going to kind of do yep. it and then I'll let you kind of yep. feel. So I set the knife to the side of my board, maybe the right side or left side, whatever, okay. with the blade facing in towards the tray or the sure. board. Sure. So you put it, you put it next to the tray, and then you almost tucked it in a little bit. Yep. And like you said, so now the blade itself is against there. So if I end up running my hand on the side yep. here at all, I'm just on the dull side, and I don't exactly. have to worry. Exactly. Yep, that makes or sense. Or you could also put the blade or the knife at the top of the board. Same thing though, with oh, the sure. sharp side Tuck facing it. in. Yep, that makes so sense. So when you're searching, you can easily find that. Okay. It's easy to forget to do that step though. So just anytime you're cutting, just be focused. If, yeah. You know, be careful. So. And then you know where it is, right? I mean, that's yeah. always been mm -hmm. the biggest thing for most. I, I know for myself personally, mm -hmm. when I'm doing a task, if I'm not really paying attention. And just of those little pieces, I'll set uh, something down, a screwdriver down, a knife down. And now I have no idea where I put yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Because I was in, my mind was on whatever task I was about mm -hmm. to do. So it really does make such a big difference if you are just very 
organized about when you set these things down yep. you know exactly you always put it in the same spot yeah you, know, you can yep. easily find it again exactly and with practice like anything it gets to be routine you kind of yeah. remember to do that easier yeah. Um, just a couple quick other tools before yep. we actually start cutting our, our food. Um, I'm going to set on the board a little, um, it's a chopper, I guess. Okay. Um, there's lots of little small appliances that you can get oh, yeah. that do chopping for you. Okay. So if you don't want to dice up the tiny items, you can use something like this. Sure. This has, um, it opens up, there's a blade inside down on the bottom. Okay. So you um, put it your has stuff a, inside. Yeah, the... put your stuff inside. Oops. And then yeah. there's a crank handle that comes off, as you can see. <laughs> yes, I just knocked off. Yeah. See. But this is just one example. There's lots of different kinds um, that you can get that are kind of contained. Gotcha. So if you don't want to do that little dicing, because I will say... It's kind of cool, though. And yeah, I like it. It's turn no it, batteries. Right? It just, so yeah. It's not electric. It just, you turn the handle and it... it if there's no... How do I make it smart then? How do I use... How do I say, Alexis, chop my... It won't no, work with this one, but okay. I'm sure there's a smart uh, dicer find out there. Find a way to me, it's you. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> make my salad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, those types of devices okay. are available. I, too. I wonder though, uh, like, what would that be able to chop? Because presumably there will be like the harder things it won't be able to chop as well. So I. The, I use a similar one at home for making salsa. So okay. you can dice up your tomatoes. You mm -hmm. can dice up your onions, um, some avocados you can okay. put in there and just crank away and it, it dices everything. Okay. Up. It's pretty, it works pretty good. Yeah. And depending on the type of, of device or appliance that you get, you can get some really high tech ones that plug in sure. and, sure. you know, um, you can go crazy with that kind of stuff. So but just to save some time if you don't want to gotcha. dice up because, again, dicing is, is tricky when you're getting to really small pieces. Yeah. It's hard to dice. Yeah. So, All right. So are we ready to let's start do making our salad? Yeah, let's so do some. on the far left of you, Corey, there's yep. a big bowl that has all of our produce in it. So gotcha. we're going to grab the lettuce to start. All right. Um, how do you normally chop up your lettuce? What do you usually do? Honestly? You make, or do you make salads? I do. Very much. Up. I I. <laughs> do it i just use the hands honestly yep so okay. i'll just kind of rip off some off of the, the 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 lettuce and then i'll just kind of tear it into smaller pieces with my hands that's perfect yeah, that's, that's what I, I for really salad and I, that's what i usually recommend is mm -hmm. to use your hands you you have that nice tactile feedback so it's easy to tell how big of the pieces you're making yep, exactly if you want to get fancy you can use knives which the cutting techniques that we'll show with the veggies kind of apply to this too okay so, gotcha um so I want to show you two um, some cutting gloves too. Oh yeah. Um, so the cutting gloves, whenever you're cutting something, the hand that's holding onto what you're cutting, the finger should always be curled mm -hmm. so that you don't cut yourself. So I'm going gotcha. to place my hand on the lettuce just to kind of demonstrate okay. um, what I mean by curling. And you can place your hand on mine just to kind of feel. Gotcha. So it's kind of like you're making a claw, like you're clawing sure. at something, but so you don't not have super your finger, drastic. You don't have your fingertips out flat. You're bringing them in like yes, a grip. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So that hand, whatever, are you right-handed? I am right-handed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so whatever hand is holding on to the vegetable. So if I was going to gonna cut, like if I wanted to cut this part off here, yep. I would kind of curl these in like this with my left Even, hand. Maybe not quite so not drastic so okay. like that. Just so okay. the tips are kind of of your fingers are gotcha. tucked in a little bit okay. so that the knife if it does touch your fingers you're not going to cut your fingertips gotcha. at all so gotcha. um so that and then we also have cutting gloves so if you're really nervous about cutting things i'm going to hand you this sure. um this is a cutting glove okay. it's lined with stainless steel even though it doesn't really feel, feel like, like it, it. Sure. it's comfortable um it's flexible it's nice and tight to your hand yeah. Um, this is one size fits all, so hopefully it does <laughs> yeah. fit you. I know, I, know, <laughs> I know at home, Corey has the gloves from a suit of armor that he likes yes, to wear. Yes, I do. Yeah, those. I, the one, I, like the metal? Yeah, yeah exactly. I have a, I have a full okay. knight's uh, <laughs> armor uh, chain. chain metal. I, I usually take, I don't wear the whole thing when I'm cutting. Yeah. I usually just get the gauntlet part. So. Exactly, oh the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Whatever I, works, as long as I find the gloves game. interesting because... Mm -hmm. um, I always have this argument kind of at home when I'm doing yard work and stuff mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with the, the gloves. I mm -hmm. understand it. I despise wearing gloves only oh. because I lose so much tactile feeling yep. from it. 
But I get it. I like those being real tight like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still, you don't lose a lot of feeling then. So uh, that yeah. totally makes sense. That's why I like them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to you. You know, if you're yeah. not going to wear the gloves, that curling your finger thing is so, I, everybody should do that anyways. Yes. Even if you are wearing the gloves, keep your fingers curled. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Sometimes you can lose some tactile feedback. But you also don't want to lose fingers. Don't want to lose fingers that's like either. A no, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I will say, speaking of cuts and you know, potential injuries, mm -hmm. just people with great vision cut themselves too. Correct. So just keep that in mind. But make sure you know where your band aids are, anyways. That's a good point. So that if you do cut yourself, you're not running all over, getting blood yeah. all over. Make sure we you have, know where they're we at. We have two kitchen tourniquets just in case. <laughs> 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 just kidding. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so with this lettuce, I'm going to show you a technique for, we're going to cut the end of it off just okay. to kind of show you a little slicing technique. Gotcha. We'll practice a, a little bit more with our cucumber, but. Okay. So your left hand is going to, first of all, find where maybe the right end of the, the lettuce is. Okay. So use your, your left hand to kind of search all the way till the end to the right side. So all the way here. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yep. And then find where the right side of that is. So good. Okay. And then what you're going to do is use that left hand to bring it towards the left until you're going to make where you're going to make your first cut. Okay. So we, we're mainly wanting to cut off that end piece. We don't sure. want that end piece. Sure. Okay. So how far would you say for that? Like right about here? Yep. And you can tell by how it feels. So that really hard part of the lettuce, yep. just think about, you don't want to eat that hard part. You don't want to be part. eating that part. <laughs> so yeah. cut off whatever you don't want to eat, basically. Okay, gotcha. And then your left hand, again, has the fingers curled. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Your right hand is going to search for that knife. Gotcha here, tucked underneath. Yep. Got it. And when you go to cut something, you don't want to just start guessing and slicing down anywhere. Correct. You want the knife to start from the right and move towards the left until it can touch the side of the, the lettuce. So bring it in sure. until it touches so I come the here side. And then I've hit, now I've hit the side of the lettuce. Yep. Got so it. So now you can kind of feel where that yep. is. So now I know I need to come up over it though yep. because I'm too low. So how would you, what is your recommendation at this point now, you obviously want to come and cut close to your, fing your left f yep. fingertips but obviously not too close. So what do you recommend? How do, what's the safest way to bring your blade? Is it tipping the top of the blade to, so that well, now, what I yeah. recommend is if your fingers are curled mm -hmm. good, it's you're gonna want to bring the knife so it's touching your fingers because otherwise you don't know sure. where it is. Sure. So as long as your fingers are curled or you have your cutting glove on, yeah, you'll be okay. But oh, sorry, go, you go ahead. But I don't recommend slicing down just yet. Yeah. So your first step is to find where you're gonna make that cut and just wait just a couple seconds. And I think it would make sense. Tell me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. rather than lifting your blade and setting it down what you think is close to your fingers, yep. is it dragging it across? So yep. I'm dragging it, so now as, as I hit, now I know I'm good. Exactly. Versus picking up, setting down, when, yeah. and then setting it on when your you're finger. Back to the yeah, yeah, starting over, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so slide until you can okay. find your fingers. Don't start cutting nope, just yet. I won't. Sometimes people are eager to. All I of a promise start I cutting. won't. Yeah. <laughs> And then just do a quick check, make sure your left hand, the fingers are curled. Yep. Um, and then when you get ready to cut, I recommend getting the point of the knife down because okay. that's going to give you some momentum to start to slice down. Gotcha. If you are nervous about your fingers touching the blade, you could at this point, once you're lined up, move your fingers to the left a Slide little bit. Slide them even a farther yeah. away a little bit more yep, if you wanted exactly. to. Okay, that makes sense. And then now you're just going to get that point down and just start to slice through that lettuce. You may have to use kind of a sawing motion. Okay. Yep, you're doing good. And once you reach the board, once you can feel it on the bottom of the board, mm -hmm. keep the knife down. And we bring it down. Yep. And then slide the knife to the right to move that lettuce piece out of the way a little bit. Slide it up. There we go. Yeah, good right. job. Woohoo, I did it. Excellent. And then you can set your knife to the side so of the board. Careful, for a I'm going to bring it over here. I don't want to hit you. Steve in the chat has pointed Excellent. out you are using romaine lettuce and not iceberg. Well, and that's, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to seem uncultured, but I was about to go, oh, what kind of lettuce is this? Usually I get a, a head of lettuce that's uh but I, I prefer iceberg, but I know before everyone puts it in the chat, I know iceberg is like literally not even lettuce. Like there's not, no flavor to it. But I, know, I, get I prefer it. roaming, get I a get little it. bit of green. You want your lettuce to have some green, right? And it's tasty. It's, I know it's better for but you. But whatever kind you use, you yeah. know, so the iceberg is like the round 
the stuff. So yes. we're going to show you a technique for cutting things that are round. Okay. And you would use those techniques for, for cutting for the a head big of, head gotcha. of lettuce. So. All right. And then you would put your little scrap. Do we have a scrap bowl? Is that yes, it? We All do. right. So yep. off to my right, I'm going to drop my little lettuce in there. Yep. The cut part of the lettuce, not the, not the good part <laughs> exactly. of the lettuce. And then at this point, if you wanted to right now break up some of those pieces, sure. we're probably not going to... Do no. all of them for the sake of it. Now, <laughs> say, just for so everyone knows, too, uh, first that we should have, we would have done was hand washing. Good. The, the question, yeah, I'm the glad problem you brought that up. Yep. We went right on camera and we're <laughs> wired up with mics. So we did wash hands yep. ahead of time. So don't worry about that. Corey licked uh, his hands before the show. I saw. Well, I'm the only one <laughs> eating the salad. So, <laughs> like, the way I would make the salad is I would just take this piece right now, take a bite, then take a tomato, <laughs> take a bite. Isn't that the easiest? <laughs> should we put, we're going to put some in here? Yep, exactly. Okay, I have so you a can bowl just to my left. Break okay. them apart. Use your sense of touch to feel how big you want it. And again, if there are like hard pieces that you don't think you would want to eat, just break those pieces off and put them sure. in your scrap. I'll tell you a thumbs up for Romaine from Steve. He's also a Romaine fan. He's a Romaine. All right. Yeah. All Is he right. From Excellent. Romania. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, lots of different types of greens so that you can use for your salad. So I'm just too, doing so a, like a tearing motion. Yep. So I'm just taking a. That's what would perfect. you call a stock of lettuce? What are, what yeah, do you call? I guess a stock of, of lettuce. Leaf. Yep. Isn't leaf of leaf? lettuce. Is that, yep. Yeah, I guess yeah. a leaf. Yeah. <laughs> I we were talking know. about like washing too. So yeah, mm -hmm. washing your hands. Always wash your produce too. So think about when you go yeah. to a store to buy your produce, whatever produce people are touching. Ugh. I mean, and who knows what just and who knows what, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. they might be dirty with in the man you know picking process so always wash your your produce if you're you have any doubts if you should or not wash it it's not gonna hurt it <laughs> i find um, i wash my when i'm cooking because not, not being able to see i get very my hands are always getting full of stuff because you're just yeah. more tactile so i'm constantly washing my hands yes. so many so times important. while i'm doing it because i you know it, i just you, getting that stuff off yeah, of Yeah, your so. hands are kind of like your eyes. You want yeah. them clean. You could too, though. Do you wash your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I should have expected that. <laughs> Walked into that one. Um, you could also, if you don't want to keep walking back and forth to the sink, have just a wet rag at your workstation here to yep. keep washing them. Then, yeah. And then, too, one other little tip. Um, some produce has like a little label or a sticker on it. So mm -hmm. it tells the price and everything. Those can be hard to find. Yeah. So when we go to cut our tomato in just a minute, yeah. I'm going to see how you do with okay. finding that deal. little sticker. All right. <laughs> so, deal, deal. All right. So how are you? The, yeah, I ripped okay up a bunch of lettuce here. I can do more if you want, or we can no, move on to okay. how... Okay. Where kind of get the idea so yeah. I can take that you from want to take you. That? Perfect. Okay. I have a side cutting board. I'll just put so, over here. So do you, is it, is it okay? Uh, so we just did lettuce now. Is it yep. okay to now start doing tomato on the same cutting board? No yep. cross contamination yep. as long as it's not meat. Exactly. As long uh, as it's uh, not uncooked meat. meat. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Got yeah. It. Because everything we've washed and our board gotcha. is nice and clean. So. Okay. Good. All right. So let's try maybe the cucumber. Cucumber. Okay. So. Ooh, we get to peel that guy. Yes. Yeah, so All we right. are going to do some peeling with that palm peeler that we learned about. Okay. So I'm going to hand you the peeler. Thank and do you, you remember how to put that yeah, on? I'll do my middle finger. Yep. So this guy does have, uh, the one we have, it has a rounded end and then a, a one end that's a little more pointy. Mm -hmm. I assume the pointy end is where your fingertip is pointing towards. Yes. Okay, good. That little pointy part is a little, kind of like a little sharp part for removing oh, yeah. like blemishes from potatoes yeah. and okay. things like that. I, I don't usually use that feature a whole lot, sure. but it can be helpful for that. Okay. And then either you can have the, the vegetable resting on the board and just scrape from left to right. Okay. Or you can prop up the vegetable at a diagonal. Right, yep. To, sure. And then scrape down. Okay. You know, so top I to see bottom. That, does that blade, oh, it does move a little bit. Okay. Yep. Let's see what happens. All right. So we're going to start from the top. And scrape down. Okay. And then as you scrape down, you can use your fingers to kind of feel the surface of the cucumber, what's peeled, what's gotcha. not peeled. Because you have to kind of turn, and then, keep yep. spinning as you do it. Exactly. And then you just kind of keep rotating. I'm just hitting it up to get the, I can see yeah. it gets kind of stuck in there a Sometimes little bit. Sometimes the peelings will stick to the, the blade a little bit too, so. Okay. Um, but it, like you said, it can be a little bit easier than using one of those peelers where it's kind of stretched out yeah, in for space sure. to them. Okay, let's do another side here. Let's yep. get ourselves back. There we go. And there's a lot of things you don't have to peel, like 
when I make mashed potatoes, I keep the peelings on the potatoes. Sure. Partly because I'm isn't too lazy, the, but... <laughs> isn't that where all the... The, uh, the nutrients, the, the yeah. nutrients are in exactly. there? Exactly. Okay, yep. there we go. You're doing really great. Oh, look at me. Awesome. Actually, this thing is waste. I mean, it really is. This palm peeler is nice. Yeah. It's much the, easier very to Very nice. I, um, my mom has some arthritis, too, so the mm -hmm. other peelers are kind of hard to hold on to. So this one, she said, yeah. she just puts it on her hand. It's so much easier to use. You don't have to have that strong grip on it yeah. at all. So. Perfect. Yeah, okay, good like job. It. All right. Do we want to go all the to way to the end, or nope, is that enough? Okay. You're good. And then at this point, we're going to show you a technique for slicing that. But um, yeah, any of the peelings, you can kind of feel and yep, put them inside peeling, of your scrap bowl. Yep, good job. There we go. And we're using, so we have a green cucumber. We're putting on the white side of the board. Oh, yeah, I didn't so even think about that. See yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You automatically did it. Good job. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. right. So I'm going to take the peeler out of the okay, way. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to use that same slicing technique that we learned with cutting the lettuce gotcha. to start to slice along our cucumber. Gotcha. So I'm going to see if you remember the, some of the techniques we, we okay. showed you. Okay, so, so we're going to use the same knife, right, in yep. this example. Okay, so exactly. first what I'm going to do is use my left hand, and I'm going to come all the way to the far left or far right mm -hmm. of my cucumber, found yep. the end. Now I'm just going to slide back where I kind of want my first cut to be. Curl my left fingers just a little bit. Mm -hmm, yep. Now I'm going to bring my right hand, find my knife that's tucked underneath. Yep. And I'm going to keep it close to the tray, bring it so it hits the right edge of my cucumber. Yep. And then I'm going to bring it up over, slowly slide it until it hits my fingertips. And now at this point, I can slide my fingertips back a little bit more yep. if I want to give myself more room. Tilt the blade tip towards the uh, bottom of the tray yeah. and then I'm going to start cutting and when I hits the bottom then I can slide to the right yeah. boy you know what I'm hitting the there we go I hit a uh, little piece of yeah. peeling or something <laughs> slid, slid my blade to the right that then slid the uh, thing I just cut off out of the way yep and then I'm just gonna put my blade up against grab that little guy the end piece yeah that was the end piece so I threw it right in the trip yep. but I would exactly. say once we start actually cutting you wouldn't have to grab each one just no keep exactly kind of yep okay and it's good when you do get to the board when you cut down to the board to use that motion where you scrape to the right a little bit mm -hmm. because otherwise it kind of gets the food out of the way a little so bit don't end up with a big pile up of yeah Cut that makes sense or yeah whatever. exactly <laughs> and then yeah you use that same technique to just keep moving from just right kinda, to left so if i want to do um, the same thing again yep. so i'll bring my blade hit the side come here find out now what. your left hand is going to tell you how wide you want that piece to be yeah sure so sometimes people are like oh it's hard to tell how big you know, I want kind of uniform pieces. Yeah. Well, your left hand is going to help you with knowing Guiding that, how sure. wide. So I have one question yep. while, well, as I'm cutting here. Mm -hmm. And so I'll slide to the right, and then I'm going to slide my fingers back, yep. and then do the next one. Good job. Um, how do you, what do you recommend for, I sometimes have an issue cutting straight down mm -hmm. so sometimes i find that my blade might be end up tipping uh, either direction yep. and so mm -hmm. at the end what i get and i actually want to just feel one of mine here oh these aren't bad actually you should, those, those are, are really actually good. really good yeah <laughs> usually i'll end up where you know it's one wide. end is super wide and the other is super yep. thin do you have any recommendations for keeping <laughs> you could use your left hand can be kind of your guides so you could just kind of have when your fingers are curled, mm -hmm. kind of the front surface of your fingers, okay. that's kind of flat. So you could have the knife kind of resting against that sure, flat sure. side to go down. And that might be um, a benefit then to this bigger blade is yep. because our blade is almost as tall as the cucumber mm -hmm. itself. A lot of times I don't use these bigger blades. Mm -hmm. And so once the blade starts going through, mm -hmm. you don't feel it anymore against exactly, your left finger. But yep. because it's bigger, I can kind of feel it the yes. whole time going down yep. to keep a much straighter cut. You're exactly right. I love the, the weight and size of the knife for that. It's easier to kind of feel things with mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you and can then, keep a... And, but bear in mind, sometimes the pieces will stick to the side of the blade, and that's oh, okay. Yeah, that's, sure. And that's why our tray is nice, because we can catch any rollaways, sure. <laughs> any ones that roll away yeah, on those us. Two work so. out. Look at that. I'm like four for four yeah, on those bad boys. Yeah, you're doing boys. good. You're, those so are nice I think those might be the best pieces. things. I, yeah, they're even not too thick. That might be the best thing I ever Awesome cut. job. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna throw them, can I throw them in my salad bowl yep, over here with my bowl. lettuce? 
we, and we keep the, the bowl for the good food on one side of the board and the bowl for the scraps on the other just to kind of keep them separate. Luke, so. are you going to eat this salad when we're done? Well, I'm going to have to judge the quality of it first, Paul. <laughs> so okay. that's just how well you do. Perfect. All right. The well, that works out. smell is good too, right? Actually, it the smell is really good. All right. So we can be done with that part. Okay. Let's cut up a tomato. I want to show you another technique. For we could for probably that. skip the, the onion. I was thinking we'll skip first the onions. First of all, onion is yeah. my arch nemesis. Oh, really? <laughs> Although cutting an onion can be a little more difficult because of the peeling. So I, yes. that, I am going to warn you that we are running out of time here. So okay. just bear that in mind. We have another, uh, let's say, 10 minutes maximum. All right, oh, so we'll be good. Just do the yep. tomato and then we'll... Yeah, just okay. the tomato. Gotcha. And actually, the, the same techniques for the tomato kind of relate to the onion as well. Okay, so good. I'm going to remove the cucumber. This is the biggest tomato I've seen. So this, that is a this monster a tomato. That is. Couldn't you just buy cherry tomatoes and throw them in the bowl and be done? <laughs> I would do, <laughs> <Okay>. but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So this tomato has one of those little sticker things okay. I was telling oh, yeah, you about. Oh yeah, that's right. So I just want to see if you can kind of find. So usually I always check the top first, mm -hmm. the top rim, the bottom. Mm -hmm. If I don't find it, then I'll start to do. Oh, I think I fell. There it is. You got it. Yep, yep. So they can be really hard to find and hard to peel off too yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I was just gonna say. You gotta have so, nails. Oop. Yeah, and I don't have good fingernails either. So you know, just do your best if you have to have you somebody. Just bite it off, Corey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I cut up a pear for my daughter for most of her lunches and there's a, the the container I put them in always has stickers on the sides because oh. she I always leave the stickers on. Oh, these are not that one's off a at tough all. one. Yeah, putting you to the test there. Oh, I put that in. Yeah, you could. I mean, you Sometimes could also you... cut off the the that little end piece if you wanted to. You could run it underwater too to yeah. get it a little more this wet. One's rubbing off too. Um, I can't peel it, but it's rubbing off a little mm -hmm. bit more. I know, that's a, a tough one. That's not too bad. You can also, I mean, sometimes they do have the produce, they sell it in like a, a, a bag or something, oh, sure. so it doesn't have that on it. So that's, It's still that's a little a sticky. Thing. I probably would take it under the sink, but because we're wired up, I really yep, can't today. Exactly. But that's probably what I would do to get the rest of that off of there. <laughs> Yep, so. Okay. All right, so this is something that's round. So the round things, unlike the cucumber, they kind of roll around on yes. us. They can be hard to start to just slice from right to left. That mm -hmm. technique is a little difficult. So this is just one technique that you can use. So what I would suggest is to place the, the tomato on the board so it's most stable. Okay. So it's not rolling around quite as much. So. There you go. Yep. yep. So you turned it around so the stem part is facing that down. Had, so that had the stable. biggest surface area that was flat. Exactly. So that gives us less uh, weeble wobbles. Exactly. Right. Yep. And so for something like an onion or a melon, that's going to be, we, they're still going to be unstable. Yeah, I was right? going to say they're so the just same. You have to hold yeah. it as best as you can. Okay. Now you could use that same slicing technique that we did with the cucumber, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm going to show you another one. Okay. So you could easily start going from right to left, slicing through just like you did with the cucumber. Yep. Just are going to have to be a little more careful because it still can be a little bit wobbly, gotcha. hard to get through the the skin of the tomato that can be kind of tricky too. okay do you usually need to cut off the stem part of it or is this all fine no you your... probably don't want that part but okay. so you could do it right away mm -hmm. or you could do what what i'll show you is to cut this tomato in half first ah got it because okay. when you cut an onion or a tomato, something that's round in half first, mm -hmm. then you have a nice flat side to rest the that vegetable makes sense. on. Okay. So what we're gonna do is find the middle part with your left hand. Okay, right there. In about the middle. It doesn't have to be real exact, but sure. yeah, you got it. Keep your fingers kind of curled. Grab your knife and start out just like you did with the cucumber. Mm -hmm. Bring it in from the right side. Bring it up until you can feel your fingers. Gotcha. At this point, mm -hmm. you can either keep your left fingers where they're at or you can put your hand left hand over the top of the tomato gotcha. excellent so making like a c motion or a, a c or a u and then flipping so i have right now i have my thumb on the left side and then the rest of my fingers on the right side of the blade so the blade top of the blade is right uh resting against the palm of my hand basically you got it because okay. then now your fingers and thumb are out of the way you know they're out of the way gotcha and then your your left hand is kind of stabilizing the vegetable mm -hmm. too to hold it in place and then you're still going to get the point of the knife down and then okay. just kind of slice down you may have to use a little bit of a sawing motion to get through that skin and then once you get to the bottom yep there I'll you go that over you got it all right 
Excellent. So now we have two halves, and if we were to continue cutting this, what yep. I would do is put it on its flat side, put the tomato on its flat okay. side, find where the stem part was, that part that we're not going to want. Yeah, so it is on each side, so yep, okay. Yep. And then ah, there we're it is, gotcha. Yeah, there okay. you go. And then, yeah, I would position that stem side to the right, and then use your slicing technique that you learned. There you go. With the okay, cucumber. Right there. Yep. So then I'll come up like that. So now I'm just going to cut this. The stem edge, or, stem yep. edge off. Exactly. Get that blade done good. And then scrape to the right once you've got it. Okay. And then at this point, you know, that stem piece, if you were like worried that you're kind of wasting some of the sure. tomato, you could cut around there if you want. Oh, sure. Because you've got a bunch of good usable yes, stuff. It's exactly. just the center. Sure. Exactly. But you're also, yeah. Okay. I get um, it. I'm and not then, that yeah. guy, <laughs> We got a big enough tomato here. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge tomato, exactly. And then we don't have to cut this up, but you would just use your same slicing technique. Same as the cucumber then yep. come in. Yep, okay. So just remember the over-the-hand technique works good for wobbly things, yep. round things where you have to kind of stabilize it without gotcha. cutting yourself. Gotcha, so. okay. But yeah, those are the, the, the main techniques. You know, use your sense of touch to kind of feel how big the pieces are. If you do get pieces that are too big, you can feel them and just cut sure. them up into smaller pieces. Okay. So in this example, we didn't use the scissors, although we could have used it with the um, lettuce, mm -hmm. no problem. Yep. We didn't use the chopper, although if we would have finished up the tomato and the onion, onion yep. we could have then used that chopper to exactly. do, yep. uh, kind of dice it up into smaller chunks yep. if you want versus trying. I usually will do it with a knife, but that's mm -hmm. hard because you really got to... Make sure you have them lined up correctly with a chopper that had such a longer yeah, blade exactly. that you could get, you just kind of, you'd, you'd get, you'd be able to cut way more at one right, time. Right, true. Yep. Yep. Okay. And practice makes better. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you just kind of practice and, you know, the more you do it, the more comfortable yeah. you'll get with cutting. So. And I would think too, with that cutting motion, be confident with it. Yes. You know, we talk about mm -hmm. dull blade, but I also think being um, hesitant as you're cutting can also be a problem. But once you start cutting, mm -hmm. just be confident. And, and I think what I found too, like when cutting bread and things, mm -hmm. The more confident in the, the you, once you start the cut, just get all the way through it, that's where you'll start to have more straight, even yes. cuts where yep. instead of start, stop, start, stop, exactly. start, stop, you, know, yep. you end up, that's when you're going to end exactly. up with mistakes and, yep. and even injuries potentially. Yep. And maybe consider getting the cutting glove when you first start getting mm -hmm. into cutting. You may not have to use it all the time, but just as you're practicing and fine tuning your skills. Sure. And then you may not even need that glove anymore. Okay. So once you built up your confidence. So. Very good. All yeah. right. Well, Any that questions? was uh, very informative, guys. Yeah. Awesome. I am going to go and try some of those techniques out for myself after the show here because it is lunchtime. And uh, because it's lunchtime, we've got to go because we've got to eat lunch. Thanks for not throwing this points. tomato at us. <laughs> well, not yet. Maybe, okay. maybe off camera we'll do Ooh. that. But uh, Rose, if people do want to get together with you for mm -hmm. an in-person session mm -hmm. to learn uh, uh, these techniques and try them out for themselves, uh, how would they go about doing that? Um, they can just call our main phone number, um, 414-615-0100, and then they will, our receptionist will connect you with our adult rehab services. So you can just yeah. mention you're interested in some cooking training or activities of daily living training, and then you'll get connected with our, our main scheduler. Fantastic. We mm -hmm. typically do mostly assistive technology-related things on this Tech Connect Live, but mm -hmm. if people enjoy this kind of uh branching out a little bit we still i mean all the tools you showed today are technically mm -hmm. assistive technology but if you enjoyed the cooking and would like us to branch out into some of uh, more activities of daily living or something like this let us know down in the comments we would appreciate it Yes. Um, and uh, Steve says, great techniques. I'm going to get one of those palm peelers. Yes. And of course, you could, if you wanted, get one from the Vision Forward store. Vision yes, Forward. Uh, wait a minute. Vision, what's our, what's yeah. our website again? Vision-forward.org <laughs> store. Very good. And please do stay tuned to the channel because next Thursday, we will be releasing our next produced video. Yes. Have you ever, Corey, needed to read handwriting in a card or some other such thing? Nope, never. Never had to do it. No, well, no one ever No, this video has. is not for you. 
then. Because, oh, yeah, the Wait, next... aren't I in the video? <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> the next video is all about how to read handwriting with three different apps. Those apps being Seeing AI. Check. Uh, also Envision AI. Check. And finally, of course, how could we forget to be my AI? Oh, all the AI. All the AI. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to find out which one reads handwriting the best. And uh, maybe Corey will be getting a little gift as well. Who knows? Who knows? So uh, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. That will be next Thursday. And we'll Excellent. be back for another Tech Connect Live in two weeks' time when uh, we might be a season. Will that be the episode? No, um, two weeks from now will be Maybe the just before season. 13th or 14th. So that oh, okay. will be leave. That's the week before Tech uh, CSUN. Yes. Okay. So we will. I'm not sure that we have an official topic for that show yet, but we TBD. will figure it out, and it will be. Yes, <laughs> it will favorite. be very exciting. Whatever it is. So thanks everybody for thanks watching. For we sure. appreciate it, and thank you, Rose. And thank we shall you. see everybody next time. Sounds Bye for great. now. Thanks for joining us for another Tech Connect Live. If you enjoyed Corey and Luke's antics, be sure to join us next time. For all things Tech Connect, go to vision-forward.org slash techconnect.